Hey everyone, this lesson is on Veruca, or otherwise known as warts. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what causes warts. We're also going to talk about many different subtypes of warts. And finally we're going to talk about different treatments for warts. So warts are firm, rough papules or nodules or firm, rough skin lesions. And they're caused by an infection with human papillomavirus, so HPV. So there are about 150 different subtypes of HPV. The ones I want to talk about here are mostly HPV1. So HPV1 are the ones that infect the soles and the palms. So the HPV6 and 11 are common with anal genital warts. And we're not going to specifically talk about anal genital warts in this lesson. But I want you to realize that different HPV viruses have a predilection for affecting different parts of the body. Now, infection with the HPV virus occurs through inoculation or skin-to-skin -skin contact. And that can occur in breaks in the skin or macerated skin or any areas of weakness in the skin where that skin becomes or comes into contact with the HPV virus. And once that occurs, there takes some time for a proliferative state of skin cells to occur to form the wart. And this generally takes about two to six months. So the incubation period for the HPV virus, and by the time we see the presentation of the ward, is about two to six months. So it can take some time. And interestingly, there's an increased incidence of warts among certain occupations. And these occupations include handlers of fish, handlers of chicken or poultry, and handlers of meat. So people that work in uh, with animal meats and products are at a higher risk for getting warts. Now we're going to talk about several different subtypes of warts and we're going to talk about how we can diagnose these warts. And all warts are diagnosed clinically usually on presentation. So the first word, wart we're going to talk about is Veruca vulgaris. And this, you can remember, is a vulgar wart. This one is a raised, rough, and keratotic wart. So again, it's raised, it, it is a rough wart, so if you were to actually palpate it, it would be rough, and it's keratotic. You can see this white whitening of the wart here, so it's a lot of keratosis involved. And like many warts, Veruca vulgaris disrupts normal folds and lines in the skin. So if we were to take a look at a normal line or fold of the skin, and we were to follow it, it actually disappears when it comes into contact with the wart. And Veruca vulgaris is known as a common wart. So this is the generally the wart we think about when we think about warts. Now, another common type of wart is Veruca plantaris, or the planter warts. These are warts that occur on the soles of the feet. And a way to diagnose them is that they're generally flat. They as you can see here, they disrupt these normal lines and folds in the skin. And what's key to their diagnosis is looking and seeing these little, almost specks of blood here. And they're actually the thrombosed capillaries. So again, they're known as plantar warts. And they're, they also have hyperkeratosis as, as well. You can see this whitening of, this, of the skin inside the wart. So Easy way to remember them, plantar, uh, think of the feet, Veruca plantaris are warts that involve the feet. And what I want you to remember is that the key to diagnosis for these warts is the thrombosed capillaries, these little specks of blood. Now the next type of wart we're going to look at is Veruca plana. And Veruca plana are flat, so generally flat, maybe slightly raised, but not as raised as Veruca vulgaris and their flesh color. This is kind of key to their uh, diagnosis. These are known as flat warts. Now, the way to remember Veruca plana is they are plain. They're just a plain uh, skin lesion. They're plain in the sense that they are the same color as your normal skin. Another type of wart are the filiform warts. And the filiform warts have a couple of different key characteristics. Generally, they're very raised, and they have 
finger-like projection. So if you were to take a close look at this wart, you'd see all these little finger-like projections, what we call pedunculated. So these, this is how you will kind of make the diagnosis by seeing a wart like this with finger-like projections, it is a filiform. So now that we know those different subtypes of warts, how do we treat them? Treatment can actually be conservative. Many times warts will spontaneously resolve on their own, but it depends on the age of the individual. With children, the rule is two thirds of children will resolve or will have a remission of the wart in about two years time. Whereas adults, it could take longer, maybe several years, maybe longer than that. And it depends on how old the individual is, depends on their immune system function. So if you're not able to resolve these warts spontaneously, you can use a couple of different options. You can use topical salicylic acid and cryotherapy. And cryotherapy is a very common uh, treatment method for warts, in, especially in a doctor's office. So you may see uh, liquid nitrogen being used to essentially burn the warts. For a filiform wart, you may actually have to do a small surgical removal, what we call a snip excision. However, if you continually try to treat the wart and it doesn't seem to go away, we can use a couple of different things. We can use intralesional administration of either bleomycin or fluorouracil. And you may see that, gee, these are actually chemotherapy agents. And, and in fact, they are chemotherapy agents used in a variety of different cancers. But these can actually be used to treat very difficult warts that just won't seem to resolve on, on their own or resolve with treatment. So Please check out my other lessons if you want to learn more about other dermatological conditions. And if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.